According to some ergonomic studies, using your mouse can be six to eight times as risky as using the keyboard. There are different reasons for that. Reason number one is that when you use your mouse next to a normal keyboard, you'll tend to spread your elbow outwards, and that means tension in your upper trapezius, as well as pressure on the tendon of the supraspinatus. Reason number two is that you never stay <laughs> above the B, say, key, waiting for something to happen. On the other hand, you do stay with your uh, hand on the mouse, waiting for something to happen. So you see, when I work with the mouse, I have a combination of unhealthy postures and prolonged duration. And this we have seen in other videos that it is forbidden. You can have unhealthy postures, but not for long. You can stay for long in a posture, provided that it is a healthy one. The last reason why it may be more risky to work on the mouse is that many people will tend to lean on the elbow and thereby that will put your, the weight of your torso on your shoulder tissues. And when you lean, well, you can't move your elbow, hence your wrist does all the movement. And the wrist is not well meant to move sideways like this, so this increases the risk of tendonitis here and there. For all these reasons, it's usually quite a good idea, unless you use the numeral keypad a lot, say for example because you're a business controller, it's usually quite a good idea to aim for more compact keyboards, either very compact or more compact. It is also a good investment to go for a vertical mouse, such as the Logitech MX here, because my arm will be in a more neutral position than on the traditional mouse, and you see that has also an impact on how much I spread the elbow. Beyond all these hardware measures, there are also things that you can do in terms of mastering keyboard shortcuts. And the goal of this video is to teach you a few shortcuts that will really radically change your way of working. Let me start with a few general advice. Advice number one is that you don't always need to learn the shortcuts. Why? Because they're displayed. When I'm on Excel, I just need to press on Alt and I see that an F is appearing on the file menu, for example. If I use software with an older type of interface, when I press on Alt, I will see underlined letters. It's the same. The indication can also be in the menu. If you open Firefox, you will see, for example, that open file is control O. When you use keyboard shortcuts, you should be careful that some shortcuts can be one-handed. If I say Alt tab, for example, Alt tab is quite natural in terms of hand position. If now I want to go Alt F4, you see that I would need to twist my hand and therefore again spread the elbow. So some shortcuts can be done with one hand, some shortcuts are better done with two hands. Alt F4. Office workers will greatly benefit from what I would call the directional shortcuts. Directional, what I mean with that is the arrow keys, which will allow you to go one line up, one line down, one character left, one character right, or very, very importantly, page up and page down. You could also cite home and end key. We will come to that. Page up and page down are particularly relevant because they are excellent alternatives to the scroll wheel. You see, the, the natural movement of your finger is to flex like this. When you use the scroll wheel, you go like that. And this is absolutely not physiological for this joint. So if you do it a bit, it's okay, but you should not have this as your main scrolling tool. The last general remark is what I call the hierarchy of shortcuts. There are naked shortcuts, like page up, page down, which will allow you to scroll through the text that is open. Now, if you combine this shortcut with control, you will act at a higher level. In this case, you will switch between the tabs within an application. The highest level for shortcuts is Alt. If we use Chrome, we will see that Ctrl F4 closes one tab, whilst Alt F4 closes Chrome. In the world, this hierarchy of shortcuts will be very handy because left, right, up, down make me move one character after the other. But if I combine with control, 
control left, control right will make me move one word after the other, and control up, control down will make me move one paragraph after the other. If you combine that with shift, you will select the full word or the full paragraph. So you see, control makes you work one level higher. According to the same logic, whilst home bring you to the beginning of the line and end bring you to the end of the line, control home will bring you to the beginning of the document and control end will bring you to the end of the document. To conclude this video, let me give you six shortcuts that are quite universally applicable, at least if you use Windows. Control S is the universal keyboard to save. Control O is to open and Control A is to select everything. It can be selecting the whole text under Word, the whole table under Excel, or all the elements of your slide under PowerPoint. Then we have a few interesting shortcuts that are linked to the Windows key. Windows D or Windows M will reduce all the windows and bring you to the desktop. Windows E will open the File Explorer. And most importantly, Windows Left will allow you to split your screen in two. Windows Left will throw the current window on the left half of the screen and Windows will ask you which window should be on the right side. Of course, you can also start with Windows right, and then the program will ask you which window should be on the left half. This is particularly useful for people either who don't have a double screen, or as I've explained in the video on dual screens, well, for people who want to, say, have two A4s next to each other without and paying the consequences of having a too wide visual field, which would cause important neck rotations. So again, the idea is not really to learn the shortcuts, it's more about learning their logic, knowing where to find them, and practicing a bit. And little by little, you'll find that actually you use the same shortcuts all the time, and these ones you will memorize and use automatically. Bear in mind that keyboard shortcuts are much quicker than mouse actions, especially for repetitive actions or for actions that would require to click on a precise area. You're much faster to activate two keys than to go with your cursor and click precisely.